Russian Z-War correspondents spoke about the formation of regiments of wounded disabled soldiers in the Russian army. Wounded veterans, including officers with leg and hip injuries, now command recruits. One of the military propagandists reported this on his Telegram channel, sharing his impressions after visiting a training ground in the Russian Federation. According to him, one of the commanders with a shattered hip is forced to remain at the training ground, unable to put on a bulletproof vest. The next shot, the same lame officer on the move teaches an evacuation group to retreat with cover. I look at all this and understand that our army has become completely different. He admits observing the degradation of the Russian army, which was essentially destroyed during the two and a half years of the war in Ukraine. Now the disabled and wounded who have flooded Russia after Putin's decision to attack Ukraine are becoming a new reality for the Russian Federation. Ukrainian soldiers have said that Russia also fails to evacuate injured troops and at times sends its own injured soldiers back to the battlefield as part of these formations. On the front lines, Ukrainian soldiers use a graphic term to describe the Russian tactics they face daily. They call them meat assaults. Waves of Russian soldiers coming at their defensive positions sometimes nearly a dozen times in a day. Russia benefits from a significantly larger population than Ukraine. Some of those in the assaults are former prisoners, but Russia is also able to recruit through making one-off payments, sometimes thousands of dollars. And there have been complaints from the Russian side about crippled regiments in which wounded soldiers are forced back into fighting. All of this, Western officials say, means Moscow can keep throwing soldiers, even if poorly trained, straight onto the front lines at the same rate they are being killed or wounded. Ukraine could not match the Russian tactics, even if it had the numbers, partly due to a different attitude towards casualties. Only thanks to the North Korea, the Kremlin can still wage its war in Ukraine. At that, many shells were produced a long time ago, but they are still in the service of the North Korea. American military experts write that only thanks to Pyongyang, the Russian Federation can still fight against the Ukrainian armed forces. At that, the North Korea has a lot of shells, even though most of them are unreliable. The resource, foreign policy, informs. As of the summer of 2024, the North Korea supplied the Russian Federation with about 2 million shells. Most of them were defective. The expert on weapons of the North Korea, Van Diepen, said that even despite the large amount of defects among artillery shells, the Russian Federation can still fight against the army of Ukraine. The main tactic of the Russian Federation is to release as many artillery shells as possible before the offensive. Michael Kaufman of the Carnegie Endowment agrees that the North Korea's artillery shells are unreliable, but their quantity also affects the war in Ukraine. Experts say that North Korea shells allow the Russian Federation to have a 3 to 1 advantage on the battlefield. It is Russia's large number of shells, although they are of poor quality, that alarms both Kyiv and the West. About half of the approximately 3 million artillery shells that Russia uses each year in its war against Ukraine come from North Korea, according to the Times. A source of the agency who cited Western intelligence data, Russia has become dependent on supplies from North Korea after Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang earlier this year. Western intelligence assesses that many of the North Korean shells may be faulty, but their sheer number allowed Russia to achieve consistent successes on the battlefield. The Times source noted that despite this, Russia is suffering significant losses in Ukraine, about 1,200 military personnel per day, 480 of them in the battle for the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region. According to Western intelligence, Russia is currently unable to simultaneously capture Pokrovsk and push Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region without mass mobilization. However, the Russian authorities are not taking that step at this time. The source of the agency added that there are currently no signs that Putin is backing away from his main goal of subjugating Ukraine's sovereignty. He also added that he sees no prospects for negotiations in the future. The strikes by the Security Service of Ukraine drones on airfields and warehouses with guided aerial bombs, cabs, leave Russian troops without key weapons. 
Ukrainian political scientist Taras Zagorodny wrote about this, commenting on the successful strikes by drones of security service of Ukraine on warehouses with cabs at an airfield in the Voronezh region. The expert emphasizes that Ukrainian drone strikes on Russian territories have become regular. This not only transfers the war to enemy territory, but also affects the situation at the front. Even Russian military experts have acknowledged that after the drone strike of Maluk's team on ammunition depots, their supplies to the front line have decreased. We failed to protect the depots. Now we have problems with supplies to the front line. This is the general tone of publications in the Z networks of Russian telegram channels. Zagorodny emphasizes. The strikes of security service of Ukraine on the airfield and warehouses with cabs leave the Russians without key weapons. It is obvious that each cab destroyed on the ground is a bomb that did not fall on our positions at the front, did not destroy another residential building in Kharkov, Zaporozhye or in the Donbass. The political scientist believes. The expert emphasizes that blowing up warehouses significantly undermines the enemy's morale. They know where they will hit, but they are not capable of repelling a massive drone attack. In a word, demilitarization is going according to plan, but they are demilitarizing the Russians. Zagorodny summarizes. Let us recall that it was previously reported that on the night of October the 2nd to the 3rd, drones of the Security Service of Ukraine, the Special Operations Forces and other Defense Forces attacked warehouses with cabs, parking lots, for Su-35 and Su-34 aircraft and storage areas for aviation fuel at the Borisoglebsk military airfield in the Voronezh region of the Russian Federation. It was from here that the enemy actively bombed our cities and villages with cabs. Recall that Russian researcher has possibly managed to improve guided aerial bombs by increasing their range up to 80 kilometers. This poses a threat to Ukraine's civilian population. Serhii Bratchuk, Spokesman for the Ukrainian Volunteer Army South noted that such strikes are purely terrorist, aiming to pressure and break the civilian population. Unfortunately, the enemy has the tools for such strikes and continues to improve them. The enemy, unfortunately, is improving their weapons today, practically implementing the formula of converting high-explosive aerial bombs into guided ones. Using changes in tactical and technical characteristics and universal modules for planning and correcting fire, they are definitely capable of reaching a distance of up to 80 kilometers, commented Bratchuk.